Hey y'all, thank you for tuning in to We Talk Weeklies after the talk with WPPM LP Philadelphia. Yeah, this is one of the hottest radio shows that talks Charles's favorite segment, love and relationships. <laughs> Whatever. Gives the good news and the bad news, and of course, the latest in entertainment news with the sizzle. Yeah, sizzle. Yeah. Dope. Yeah. So make sure you keep it locked to We Talk Weeklies after the talk with your boy Charles Gregory in the beautiful Warren Sizzle. Mm-hmm. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on 106.5 FM. Woo! What's up, y'all? This your boy Charles Greg with the beautiful Lauren Sizzle and the beautiful Classy Lady Sparkle. We are definitely in the building, and this is We Talk Weekly's After the Talk Award winning official selection. All of the above. We are here, man. This is probably one of the most underrated shows. In entertainment right now, we talk weekly, boy Charles Gregory, Lauren Sizzle, and Classy Lady Sparkle. So, without further ado, Sizzle, who do we have today? Who do we have today? So, we have the beautiful Miss Del Scott. She is a designer, author, speaker, and mother who is originally from Detroit, now residing in Delaware, where she and her husband are raising their family. Del Scott is fresh off a long week's, a uh, long few weeks of major fashion shows, including New York Fashion Week. Atlantic City Fashion Week, Philadelphia Fashion Week, and L.A. Fashion Week. Miss Del Scott is a role model for the hardworking woman, women who want to change the shape of fashion. Del's collections represent real women and their real beauty. Del says her inspiration behind creating the Del Scott collection was to get women back to displaying their true essence, Grace, elegance, and class. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I am excited to be here. Sometimes I hear my bio and I'm like, is that me? Yes. <laughs> like, where do I have find the time to do all this exactly. stuff? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Let's start from the beginning. Let me tell you why I like the interviews, right? Let me tell you, this is why I like the interviews, because I get a chance to talk to good folks. The good old folks, man, especially the folks that's doing some good things, man, and making people look fantastic and fabulous. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why I love my interviews, you know. And so let's start from the beginning. What, you know, you have done. All right. Let's start with family and then let's go into what you're doing because you're a mother, you're a wife, you're all of the above. Right. Yes. How do you manage that that hectic and, and crazy schedule? It is, uh, it's not easy. I definitely have to say God has given me some grace uh, and some strength that I didn't Mm. even know I possess. Uh, We have three three children. The Mm. oldest one who is 25, uh, she has our two grandsons and she's in Virginia. So we still have at home our 20 year old daughter and our 14 year old son. So you can imagine those teenage years (laughs) that Mm -hmm. I'm dealing with. But um. It's truly not easy because, you know, in everything you have to try to find a balance. I'm fortunate that I have a family that sacrifices me and allows me to be able to do what I believe that I am truly called to do. So Mm. uh, my husband and I, we tag team. I'm fortunate my kids are a lot older where I don't have to be as hands on, you know, as with toddlers and small children. But we all just kind of pitch in and we, we definitely make it work, but I'll tell you, when I do have that downtime, which is few and far in between, I treasure it. Right. I, I really do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when, when, so let's talk a little bit about, because sometimes when, uh, you know, a significant other spouse, uh, someone who, that you are in a committed relationship, they're kind of doing things that's different than what the other spouse is doing, and that can be pretty challenging. Have you experienced any I guess, uh, any push-pull at times because you're pursuing your entrepreneurial endeavors? That is a very good question. Uh, We just came back from L.A. Fashion Week, and my husband was with me. And I actually, I just put up a post, you know, because I I first always give thanks to God for the creativity that he gives me. But I said my first picture before I post any of the designs, I said, I'm posting this picture of my husband and I because even though he's not the one that you see on the forefront, he is intricately involved and it is definitely an us thing. I'm fortunate he's, uh, you know, I call him, you know, the the Clyde to my Bonnie, my partner Mm -hmm. in crime. Mm -hmm. He's my biggest supporter, my biggest fan. Everything that I do, uh, you know, every idea, every vision, I bounce it off of him. He gives me his opinion. And it's definitely an us thing at the end of the day. So I'm thankful for that, that Mm -hmm. I don't get that pushback. 
And, you know, I always believe it takes a strong woman to stand beside a strong man and a strong man to stand beside a strong woman. So I'm thankful that he allows me to be everything that I feel, you know, that, you know, everything that I'm purposed to be and purpose to do while I'm here. I'm yeah. thankful for that. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Let's talk about your line. And you, she smiled with that. You are, <laughs> she's excited about that. Let's talk about the line, right? Let's, let's talk a little bit about the line. First, uh, the name of the line. It is the Del Scott Collection. The Del Scott Collection, yes. And the most recent collection is called Mirage. Mirage, mm. Mirage. Now let's talk a little bit about Mirage, right? And what was the inspiration behind it? The inspiration, usually I'll hear a word. Right. That's kind of just how it starts for me when I start to uh, create a new collection. So I heard the word Mirage and the inspiration behind Mirage. Typically, when you think of Mirage, you think of the desert. A mm -hmm. Mirage is something that you think you see, but it really doesn't exist, like right. an apparition, things mm -hmm. of that nature. So with the... With the influence of the desert, I started to think of desert tones. So there's mm. nude, uh, mm, there's uh, some dark there's brown, browns, there's the black, tans, the cat, white, the camels. rose gold, yeah, yeah, right. uh, yeah, metallics. Yeah. When you yep. think of the sun Absolutely. at sunrise yeah. and midday, yeah. you know, and when the sun sets. So that was really my influence Fantastic. for Mirage. Now, usually in uh, one's line, they have one significant piece. What is that piece for you? That piece would be, uh, would definitely be my closer. Okay. And that is a gold all metallic gold. It's a foil to halter dress, mm -hmm. or rather a gown, mm -hmm. because it's very full and it has black beaded trim on it. Oh, mm. That sounds amazing. You yeah. got to make sure you send us that picture so we can have somebody post that on Instagram yes. so you can yes. actually see what's going on here. Now, Mirage. Now, what's long term? Let's talk a little bit about where you see your line, right? Where do you actually see your line? Do you see it in... Uh, you know, major kind of like labeled like malls, super malls. Do you see it as like, you know, contemporary boutique? Where do you see it? With my platform that you have your collection on is very important. At this juncture, what I'm doing now is I am seeking out boutiques okay. to carry the line. And I'm also looking to open a store of my own okay. as well technically probably within the next within the next year right. prayerfully I'll be able to do that so that's a big a big step for me as well but I tell you when I started this line I've I've always had grand visions of where it's going to go and I definitely believe it's gonna, it's going to be global fantastic mm -hmm. now let's talk a little bit about trending with some of the thing you know uh how how does your line fit into um some of the trending kind of you know uh uh styles of 2020 you know what i mean where does your your line fit into that or are you saying that you're setting the trend are you are you setting the mark where are you fitting in right now i would definitely say setting the trend okay. um i tend to go against the grain yeah. in that respect i'll get a vision for a line um and then i'll start to see particular designs right. when i first started it's so funny because this is only my fourth collection mm. so when i started my first collection I just had all this creativity that I knew I needed to release. So I was kind of a little bit all over the place. But then I started to gravitate towards formal wear because it's mm. something about a formal dress or yeah. a formal mm. gown on a woman. Yes. A woman can't help but feel elegant. Mm. She can't help but feel beautiful. Yeah. She can't help but feel graceful. And she carries herself as such. A gown is not something that you would walk any kind of way in, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So her whole stature and, you know, her poise, th the way she carries herself is completely different. So with me, once I get the vision for the line and ideas for certain designs, I just go with that and ne not necessarily following the trends. And I've been blessed that the feedback has been very, very good. Yeah. Now, I'm going to read something to you. I want you to tell me the first thing that comes to mind. All right. Uh -oh. uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, the Del Scott Collection what? Uh, was to get women back to displaying their true essence, grace, elegance, and class. Brilliance. Mm. Mm. Brilliance. Fantastic. I, you know, before I even started designing, uh, and my journey as, as to how I even became a designer is just, is just so unique. You know, it's funny because when people hear about my background, my background, I have a degree in accounting, actually. Mm -hmm. So people say, well, how do you get from accounting to fashion? Because they're at complete opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. And what I tell people is the pleasure 
of uh, being one of the designers to showcase with Ebony Fashion Fair alum mm-hmm. at Bally's in Atlantic City. Mm-hmm. So to hear their stories, mm-hmm. women, you know, legendary models of back in that era and how they dressed and right. even how they walked was graceful, completely mm-hmm. different than the way that you see models grace the runway today. Um, I've had a lot of different, you know, influences and I've been blessed to have them. But, you know, growing up, I, I saw these things and then I'm looking how fashion has evolved and that's a good thing. Right. Mm-hmm. But then I also, with some of the trends that are out there, I don't believe that they always necessarily display the true essence yeah. of a woman or her inner brilliance. And I believe that the formal gowns and the formal wear does that. Mm. Mm. I agree. You know, when you say that, I think of um, glam. I think of glamour. I think of Breakfast at Tiffany's. I think yes. of Dallas, the old movie, you know. I think yes. of Diane Carroll. Yes. The late Diane Carroll. You know. Just mm-hmm. stunning. Stunning, right. And me as a, a, a designer, started designer now, stylist, I mean, for me, is is bringing all of those pieces together and make sure they all balance so you can give that imagery. You know what I mean? Yes. And so, so I get it, and that's a wonderful thing. Uh, fashion Week. What was your experience at the different fashion weeks? I mean, that's usually the epitome of what designers want to do, right? Fashion Week, be it to present at Fashion Week. You know, what was that feeling like for you? I think probably the grandest experience was probably the first time I did New York. Uh, because I think that's something that, you know, that's an achievement that all designers want once you've been able to grace that platform. So that was a big deal for me. I did that in 2018. I did uh, Philadelphia Fashion Week for the first time just a, just last month. So a great platform, got a lot of exposure, and then just came back from L.A. Right. So this year has definitely been phenomenal for me as far as Fashion Weeks are concerned. And I'm already getting invitations to grace bigger platforms right. and other platforms as well, and also opportunities overseas. So right. I think, you know, it's very exciting. Like I said, I think that first time around, If you think about it, it's almost like when you graduate from high school Mm -hmm. versus when you graduate from college. It's something about that first go around Mm -hmm. that just really touches you. And you're like, yeah, you know what? I'm on the right track. So I would say New York was definitely the one that I probably, you know, uh, probably resonated with with me the most because that was my first time being on a major right, platform. Right. But each time it's gotten better. One thing that I do, I tend to be my hardest critic. I'll look at every platform I've been on. I'll look at, you know, how it ranks as far as exposure, right. as far as press, buyers, things, things of that nature. I'll critique and look at what I could have done differently um, because a lot of times, you know, we put the pressure on the fashion weeks to do a lot of the marketing yeah. and things of that nature, which, yes, they should to a certain extent. But then also your destiny is in your hands. You as the designer, it's your responsibility to make sure that your brand is, you know, being marketed the way that it should seek out the press. And that's one thing that I did after Philadelphia Fashion Week. I found out who were the prominent bloggers, who were mm-hmm. the prominent press that attended, and I connected with them. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. That's great. So, you, five years down the line, where do you see yourself? Uh, definitely uh, having a bigger national uh, prominence with my line and also overseas mm-hmm. over overseas as well growing the online portion as well and i definitely see some definitely stores yeah. storefronts in there yeah i talked to a lot of designers and one of the things that they was not ready for is the online presence they're so used to the shows yes right it's the online presence now that they tend to struggle with what's your biggest struggle as it relates to promoting you I would say that my biggest struggle and what I'm working on now and I'm glad that a lot of things are falling into place is that team yeah is because as the designer you need to be in the vein in that creative vein that's really where you need to be a majority of the time so I know a lot of emerging designers you don't have that team in place you're wearing all the hats. You're yeah. trying to be the designer. You're trying to be the marketer. You're trying to handle the online presence as far as social media and yeah. things of that nature. And it can be very overwhelming. And, mm-hmm. you know, I've done it. I've been there. So you end up spreading yourself thin. So I would say, you know, the team. Try to build that team. Find people that support your vision. They can see your vision. 
because supporting it is one thing, but they actually have to see it. They have to feel it in order to know what's the right direction to go. Mm -hmm. And I'm blessed this go around, you know, at this juncture where I'm at with the brand that I'm having those people on board Mm -hmm. where I can stay more in the creative vein and they can tend to guide me more or completely, you know, get to the point where they can completely take over those other areas. Mm, Fabulous. Every designer, even myself, when I first started, (laughs) have have that one that one thing where they try to start to make something and it turned you remember Gordon Gartrell? <laughs> oh, <man. All> right. <laughs> yes, I can picture it right now. So, so <laughs> the, the, the first thing I ever tried to make in was a pair of leather pants that I wanted and I was like, Mom, I want some leather pants. I ain't buying you no leather pants. You better make some leather pants. All right. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't put my legs in them, right? I, I, I didn't understand that part of it, right? Um, until later. But what was that one piece where you like, ugh, oh, that was rough for me, you know? It was a dress, and I still probably have it in a scrap bag today. <laughs> <laughs> it's rough because like I said my first collection it wasn't cohesive it right, was all right. over the place yeah. you just know you have this creativity that you just yeah. have to release so it's like I just gotta make it and then mm. you start to make it and you're like this is <laughs> not working out it's <laughs> not what I thought, right? it's not that easy right? no mm. it, and, it's, and I tell people all the time and I think that's one of the things that I just mentioned on social media the other day you know it looks glamorous mm-hmm to everyone else but it's not easy and it's not for the faint at heart because we all have moments where we get frustrated Mm -hmm. where you have moments where you're like is this worth it and then I you know I had those moments I kind of throw a little you know mini tantrum and pick myself up and and I keep going because you're gonna run into hurdles you're you're gonna run into challenges yeah there you go you know what I can't remember the full saying but Will Smith said fell hard fell often and fell forward he said, that's the only way where you're going to learn. Yeah. So you got to fail hard so you can learn from it. You got to fail often so you can learn from all those mistakes. Well, my motto this year became go big or go home. I know that's mm-hmm. right. Either we're going to put in 200% and I know I gave it my all or we're not. I know that's that right. That was the motto. Get him. You already <laughs> know. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. So I'm going to throw you a curveball. Oh, goodness. Yeah. We gotta do it right <laughs> so we, we here we talk weekly right and so i usually yes. say you know when the interview is going pretty good i feel like okay huh. <laughs> let me see if she, she really want her yeah, let me see if she really <laughs> want her tools so i usually ask what's the one question that no one else knows about you del scott would you look whoo mm-hmm. that bottom lip started to quiver <laughs> She like, damn. So you dig in that deep bag you got over there with the zippers, unzip it, dig all the way at the bottom of that and pull out mm, the one thing that no one else knows about Del Scott that you're telling us right now here on We Talk Weekly. I'll put it like this. I tend to get misjudged okay. by my appearance. Mm. So when people see me, they're like, oh, she's just, she's glam. She's this, th- she's that. I can be very simplistic. Like when I'm home, you'll see me T-shirt, shorts, mm, barefoot. No doubt. Hair clipped up. I know that's right. Nothing fancy. Uh, my my favorite meal used to be like a burger and fries. <laughs> People look at me. They're like, oh, well, you look like you want filet mignon and no uh, burger and fries. I know that's, that's you know, funny. so I'm, I, I don't look. I put it like this. I'm not how I generally look. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So people see the glam and I think kind of they kind of get blinded by that. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm very laid back, very personable. Mm-hmm. And I think that tends to shock a lot of people. I even get like from a lot of models. Mm-hmm. They're like, mm-hmm. you are so nice to work with. And it's almost eerie because I'm like, well, what kind of designers are yeah. you working yes. with? Yeah. And they said, we get a lot of designers that just talk to us any kind of way because, you know, the industry tells them they are a hanger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And but I try yeah. to extend the same courtesy just overall put the industry aside that I would want to extend it to me. Mm-hmm. Respect right. me. I'll respect you. And I treat you as such. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. Who was your number one uh, inspiration as it relates to fashion? Like you used to look at and say, I want to be like that one day. Or, Valentina. I, mm-hmm. <laughs> the... <laughs> 
<laughs> meticulous. Just attention to yes. detail. Um, Valentino Red. Mm. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'd have yes. him. Him. Hands yes. down. The last dime. He is the last. At the, yeah, oh yeah, I like Valentino. Mm. Dude, he's very. Yeah. He's a great guy too. Great guy. He got a documentary I saw. Excellent. Um, I can't remember the name, but yeah, yeah, that Valentino. I would have Red. to say him. Fantastic. So yeah. for me, if I could grow to be able to do stuff on that level, mm. that would be that would be an honor and just something phenomenal for me. No doubt, no doubt. So what would you, if it was one thing that a, a emerging designer, you know, was coming up, looked at you and was like, Del Scott, you know. Just, you know, I want, you know, can do you have any words for me? What would you tell me? I would say you have to have a lot of patience uh-huh. with yourself, with the process. Um, if anybody's like me, that's typically like an A-type personality, mm-hmm. which a lot of creatives can be right. uh, to a certain extent, very driven. Yeah. Uh, you have to have a lot of patience with yourself for the process. Because I think sometimes, like for me being my hardest critic, right. I can kind of beat myself up a little bit too hard. So a lot of patience, um, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of fortitude. Right. Because you're going to get knocked down. Mm -hmm. A lot of times other people may not see what you envision for your line the way that you see it. So you may not get the feedback that you expect to get. Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to take that with a grain of salt, salt, Mm -hmm. have thick skin. A lot of times, you know, the larger these platforms are with some of the fashion weeks, you know, you have to apply. Yeah. You can't just pay a registration fee and grace their runway. So you have to apply. Sometimes you may be contacted. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you may not. Yeah. Sometimes you don't get a response and things of that nature. So I think you have to be thick skinned and you have to truly believe in what you're doing, even when other people may not. And you have to truly be in it for the right reasons because you love what you do and you're passionate about what you do. If you're in it for the money, yeah. you uh, it won't last. I know that's right. It won't. Yeah. It cannot be based off the dollar. Yes, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you want to make money, but that can't be the reason. That can't be the motivation. Now, I, everyone that I speak to, everybody goes through this, like this valley and peak, you know, and I never met anyone who have never said that they did not feel like giving up. Have you ever felt like, you know what, I can't do this anymore, and what brought you back? I think I just had that moment probably about 30 days ago. We had that moment in Duluth. (laughs) And most people probably tuning in will be like, well, you just did L.A. Fashion Week. You just did Philadelphia Fashion Week. Yeah, because you're human. You have moments where things feel so overwhelming. Um, and a lot of it is, can be some of those other little details that maybe got past you or something that you wish you did different after right. the fact. And, and you know, with this industry, as most people know, a lot of designers, it's costly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I was fortunate. I kind of have a little bit of a different story. I started a fashion retail business before I started designing. Right. Mm-hmm. So I was selling shoes. I was selling jewelry and handbags. And I was doing personal shopper service. And I dabbled a little bit with styling also. So I was blessed to have that in place where mm-hmm. I could take those resources and kind of whatever profit was made, flip it over to my designs. Right, because right. even in doing that, I still felt like something was missing. Mm-hmm. I was like, this isn't enough. I, and I couldn't figure out what it was. And it wasn't until I just started designing that I was like, this is it. Mm. This is my mm. niche. So I'm blessed to have that financial resource. But financially, for a lot of designers, they can't design or present on the level they want to mm. because the financial resources aren't there. And it's naturally, expensive. when you get investors, investors want to see that they're there's some profit involved mm-hmm. before they begin to invest. Right. So it definitely becomes a struggle. Yes. You hit that right on the head. Yeah. So how can they get in contact with you, find out more about you, you know, all your online presence and all that good old stuff? Uh, pers- on a personal note, because I'm also an author, also a speaker, they can Ooh. go to delscott.com. No doubt. And for the collection, you can go to delscottcollection.com as Thank well. You. On mm-hmm. social media, Del Scott Collection and Del Scott. Oh, there you go. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. When I tell you that we have fun when we are here, we have fun when we are here. But unfortunately, we got to go, ladies and gentlemen. And it's just like that. So I want everybody to stay tuned and continue to follow, continue to show love, continue to subscribe. Because we everywhere. Is everybody ready? (gasps) 
<sighs> we talk weekly podcasts it's on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Castbox, and Spreaker. Make sure you follow us on the podcast and bitch listen to our shows. Like and follow us on our We Talk Weekly Facebook page. Download the little tuning app. Look for WPBM on P106.5 FM and tune in every Tuesday at 7 p.m. at We Talk Weekly after the talk. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, at Facebook, at We Talk Weekly, at Charles Gregor, at Lawrence, to score, sizzle, at Sparkle Prices 1. And subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to our We Talk Weekly YouTube channel. And if you're Philly, catch every Monday night, 9 30, Comcast 66, Verizon 5. 29 and 30, and you know what? We are now verified on Delhi Motion early. I'm trying to tell you, we doing what we do. <laughs> Shout out to Delhi Motion. So go to delimotion.com backslash we talk weekly. And who do you look for? We talk weekly. It's, ladies and gentlemen, we talk weekly is now on Higher Than 7 TV. Go to higher than seven.com, subscribe, and look for who? We talk weekly. <sighs> Check this out. We talk weekly is now syndicated. You can find us in Atlanta, Birmingham, Birmingham, Chicago, Delaware, Houston, Jacksonville, Los Angeles, Miami, Newark, New Jersey, New York City, Philadelphia, and all across the nation. Who do you look for? We talk weekly. Man, we in here. And if you ain't here, you a square. Because this is where all the cool people hang out with. This your boy Charles Greg with the beautiful. Lawrence. And the beautiful. Classy Lady Spark. And the beautiful. Del Sky. Man, we here. You better get here. Subscribe. Because we in the building early. But we got to get out here like last year. 